Am I the a-hole for making my brother's family homeless, especially because he has a small child and a soon-to-be-born baby? Okay, so my sister-in-law and brother will be staying at mine and my wife's house for a few months as they are both out of jobs, and sister-in-law is seven months pregnant. They also have a six-year-old child and our house was enough to accommodate all of us. The problem is that my sister-in-law is a not-so-nice person. It is the type who says she's brutally honest, and that if she sees something that doesn't please her, she will make sure everyone knows. I didn't know the extent of it, until now when she started to torment my wife. My wife is a very sensitive person. It is also unable to have kids. Not because she is infertile, but because the birthing process can prove to be extremely dangerous for her. My sister-in-law found out about it and has made it her life mission to remind my wife how joyful motherhood is, and that giving birth is something that completes every woman and that every pregnancy is a danger but a risk worth taking. Let me remind you, my wife's mother has died at childbirth, and her aunt has had multiple miscarriages. My wife has asked her to stop, but she says that she is also a resident at our home, and while she is here, she can do what she wants. I have also asked her to not to bother my wife about it, but she won't listen to reason, although she toned it down after my brother asked her. A few days ago, I had come home early from work only to find out that my sister-in-law had held an intervention for my wife with all her mother friends to encourage her to get pregnant. My wife had locked herself in our room and had been crying. I saw Red and immediately called my brother and told him I wanted his family out of my house by 10 tonight and went ahead and packed their stuff around the house myself. I didn't talk to my sister-in-law while she screamed at me, but I just gave her some noise-canceling headphones and left him in the corner room. Brother begged me to let them stay as his part-time job was not paying enough to support all three of them, plus the new baby. I told him that I had given sister-in-law many chances, and that my wife will not be disrespected in her own home. They left, and I have found out that they are currently homeless and can barely afford to get a motel for a night. My mother is on my side, but has told me to think about my nephew, who is also suffering a lot as he can't even attend online school. After knowing all this, both me and my wife feel a little guilty as the child was blameless and the soon-to-be-born one will also have to suffer. So am I the a-hole for making my nephew suffer and problem cause some trauma? I am not at all regretful for kicking my sister-in-law out, but I am worried about my nephew as he has anxiety as well. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You'd majorly be the a-hole if you allowed your horrible sister-in-law in the house and let her most definitely harass and bully your wife. Protecting your wife comes first. Sister-in-law should have thought of that before she acted so horrible. You gave her so many chances. It's her fault they are now in a mess. If Opie is willing, they could offer brother and a child a place to stay. But sister-in-law can go live with one of the women who staged an intervention to coerce a woman to have a child. But only if Mrs. Opie is okay with it. But Opie and wife are not the a-holes. Sister-in-law made them homeless. She was an a-hall to the people that were nice enough to let her family stay for free. She's one of those people who thinks that everything should go her way and just her opinion matters. Being brutally honest is just another word for a hole or boy. Not a hole. Your mom can house your nephew. Your brother must find a better job and provide for his family. Or they can go live with that lovely mother-in-law of his. That thinks that a woman is only complete if she is a mother. She can act like one. Why just him? It seems like the wife has nothing better to do with her time than antagonize people gracious enough to welcome them into their home. Not a hole. Take in a kid if you want, or mom can take him in. But your sister-in-law was way out of line here. Kudos are not strangling her, honestly. Bluntly, your sister-in-law was encouraging your wife to do some things she knew would be dangerous to her. Your sister-in-law is fine leaving you a widower, so long as your wife is part of her fruity little club. Your wife's mental health must be prioritized, especially after this incident. And unfortunately, your nephew got caught in the crossfire. But remember, all your sister-in-law had to do to not have this happen was knock off her BS. She technically told your wife to end herself, OB. That's so unacceptable, I don't think I have to say anything more. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my half-brother he's not my daughter's father or mine? My half-brother is 19. I'm 26. We share a dad but not a mom. Right after my mom died, dad had a one-night stand with a woman who is now his wife. My half-brother was the result of that one-night stand, and two years later, they were not only together, but happily married. They now have five kids together, including my half-brother. One thing she and I have in common is the loss of our moms at a very young age. Stepmom was nine, and I had just turned seven when our respective moms died. 
so she knew what it was like and she never tried to be my mom. She didn't even try to fill that role for me. She resented her own stepmother for doing it, so we had a very, very casual relationship. I appreciate her so much for that. She also was quick to remind my dad she wasn't my mom when he would call her that to me. I think she knew the best way for me to accept the change, and especially have siblings, would be to never make me feel like she was replacing or taking over where my mom once was. Here's the thing. I had my daughter 16 weeks ago, and I named her after my mom and my husband's mom. Cool. Dad started to say something, but his wife cut him off. But then my half-brother, the oldest of their kids, has been on my case about it. He told me I was rude. He told me that I should have used his mom's name, because she's been my mom longer than my birth mom was, and all this other crap. I told him to knock it off. His mom told him to knock it off. But then it came for me even harder, and told me to change her name and show respect and love to his mom, or else. I told him he's not my daughter's father or mine, so he has no business telling me what to do or deciding what my daughter's name should be. He is pissy, but I'm ignoring him. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You can name your child after whoever the hell you want. The fact that your stepmother seems to also understand this should also give you further comfort in your decision. Your half-brother needs to stay in his lane. That's what's so annoying about it. He's probably even hurting his mother by implying she should have accepted her own stepmother more. Dude needs to step off. And save his mother's name for his own future kids should he want that. Not day home. Why do people think naming babies is a committee decision? Not day home. People like this are dumb. Stand your ground. Every time I see these kinds of posts, I can't believe the entitlement of some people. Bunch of clowns. Tell them to push a kid out of their uterus and they can name it whatever the hell they please. Not today, home. But I suspect he's getting the attitude from your father. Even if your father has a little more wit about him, it is keeping his mouth shut. For now. But I wouldn't be surprised if your brother, and maybe your father, started using your stepmom's name, the middle name, instead of your mother's name. So just be prepared for that and have a plan for dealing with it. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for refusing to see my stepmother after my dad died? I, 24 female, have two half-siblings, Millie, 32 female, and Tom, 35 male. My parents had an affair. My mom met him on a business trip and he didn't tell her he was actually married with kids until she found out she was pregnant with me. I only really spoke to him twice a year through a five-minute phone call and my mom raised me totally by herself. But when I was 15, I lost her. My dad's wife knew about the affair and basically stuck with him anyway because my dad was very, very rich, as in had four houses in posh parts of London slash Surrey rich. And I was out of sight for the first 15 years of my life. When my mom died, I went to live with them, and she made my life hell. She'd make horrible remarks about my appearance, called my bouts of depression because of my loss, attention-seeking. She made sure I was never really alone with my dad, and I was shipped off to boarding school. I was never invited back for Christmas, but I spent most of the summer holidays at a village my boarding school was closest to. It was incredibly lonely, and my dad didn't ever seem to care much about me either. When I got to uni, both of them refused to help me out financially even though they did the same for my siblings. I got through uni by working during the academic year and throughout the holidays. Nobody apart from Tom bothered to show up at my graduation, and he's the only sibling I'm close to. Anyway, about two months ago, my dad very suddenly died of a heart attack. Not only was I not invited to the funeral, but Tom told me after while my stepmother was doing her speech, she only mentioned my dad having two kids, Millie and Tom. Tom was fuming at her, but she waved it off saying if she'd have mentioned me, she'd have ruined my dad's reputation. A week later, my dad's lawyers told me that my dad had secretly left me shares, some money he'd saved at a life insurance payout he set up when I was born. He left a letter apologizing for being so emotionally distant, that he wished he'd appreciate me more and that he knew the money was never going to replace how lonely I'd felt, but he was hoping it would guarantee me some kind of stability. I've taken the money, and I'm planning on immigrating soon just so I could be on my own and get on with my life. And here's where I made the A home. My stepmother never bothered telling me my dad died or anything, but earlier this week, she texted asking if I wanted to have lunch with her because she wanted to talk to me about my dad's will. I texted back, saying, You never made an effort to make me part of the family. And let's be honest, you never will. I never want anything to do with you again. And please don't come running to me about your problems because you're nothing to me. Tom told me she was sobbing at how it was unfair and didn't want to give her a chance. 
and Millie sent me a text saying I was an a-hole because I was taking advantage of how fragile my stepmother was. Tom siding with me quietly, but I'm wondering if I've been too harsh to her. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. If there is something in the will to discuss, then get a copy and work it through the attorney only. There's no need to give this woman a moment of your time. She most likely will be trying to get something from you. Work strictly through the attorney, get everything you were bequeathed, and move on. I actually had a talk with his lawyers because I was worried that if she somehow found out, she'd try and get something out of me. Apparently, when my dad got diagnosed with a heart condition, he told them to make sure this will to me was totally airtight from a legal point of view, and that there wasn't anything massive for me to will, just that I owned a small share of the house that's left, which, to be honest, I'm not interested in anyway. She probably wants to sell one or two of those houses, would be my guess, and doesn't want to pay you your share. I would make sure you get what you owed. I'm sorry, this situation is so sucky. Don't engage with her, though. Stick to your guns. Oh, that would explain it, I guess. I've blocked her from my phone, and I'm getting a new number soon anyway, thankfully. Not today, home. She's not your stepmother. She was your father's wife. There is a big difference. You have the information from his will, so you don't need anything else. Grieve for the father you lost and the dad you deserved but never got. My condolences to you for your loss. Thank you. I feel very meh about it, to be honest. It's like hearing about the death of a distant relative you barely knew. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not paying my biological mother's medical bill? Here's a little backstory. My mother was baby-trapped into having me by my father, who was very abusive towards her in many hurtful ways. When my mother had courage to end the relationship, I was around two months old. My mother had a strong hatred towards me, most likely because I was her tormentor's baby. She would verbally and mentally mistreat me growing up, and she would take her anger out on me. Not to mention she was a substance user and a strong alcoholic. She is to blame for my traumatic childhood experiences. My mother would always threaten to abandon me, adopt me out, sell me, etc., etc. And when I was nine years old, she adopted me out, and I had not spoken to her since then. Luckily, when I was 11 years old, my family adopted me. I had lost all contact with my mother and had immigrated out of America and moved to England. There, I had a lovely teenhood and went to therapy to later recover from my past trauma. I went to university to study business and I earned good money from a 24 year old. Then my adoptive parents came to talk to me, saying how my mother wants to get to know me and that they had given her my number. I obviously said I wasn't interested because I didn't even know if I had forgiven her. But a few weeks later, I had received a call from someone in relation of my mother, saying how she has some sort of heart disease and wants to meet me and apologize. After loads of consideration and talks with my family and therapist, I decided to fly out to America and meet her. I arrived at a hospital she was at, and I didn't even know what to say. Someone who I assume is her boyfriend explained to me how she has had heart failure for the past three years and how she has received a heart transplant. The only problem is that they couldn't afford it, and along with her medical bill. Long story short, he asked if I could help pay for it and how he will pay half of it back after the surgery. I just broke down crying and started screaming and shouting at them out of anger. This resulted in an argument with Amanda Dai and both of us being escorted out of the building. I simply just couldn't believe how they lied to me saying how she wanted to apologize to me when she refused to even look or say hi to me. I was so angry that I wasted my money to fly out to America just to be told they needed my money and how they would only pay half of it back. They didn't even have the courtesy to tell she has heart failure until she had gotten the opportunity to have a heart transplant. Some people are calling me Neha because she is my biological mother and how I should forgive her and stop being as stubborn as I can afford to pay for it and either way I'll get some money back. Whereas others agree with me and thinks someone else better than her should deserve the heart transplant and think I shouldn't pay for it. Not day home. You owe them nothing. And you don't owe forgiveness to your biological mother who helped trick you into crossing an ocean during a pandemic just to manipulate you out of money. Cut them all off. Tell your adoptive parents what happened and ask them to never give out your contact information again. She literally threw her kid away at nine years old. Screw anyone saying to just get over it. I would like to add that biology has little to do with who should be considered family. Family loves and supports one another. When did a biological mother do that? I hope he deserved better during childhood. That woman needs to be reminded that she does not deserve the title of mother when she's only concerned about her own self-interests. 
but they misled you to get you to travel a very long ways. You weren't even there when they decided to take on these medical bills, so you have no obligation to pay them. And if you do, I wouldn't count on being paid back. I hope you can make the most of the trip and visit friends in new places. She is a giant a-hole. She didn't raise you, didn't properly care for you, and didn't show you love. You owe her nothing. Block her number and any other number she or her boyfriend call you from. Do not give it another thought. I'm sorry for the pain she has to cost you. I'm so glad you have a therapist and a good family to help you through this. Not today, Hull. Just because she was mistreated didn't mean she could inflict it on you. There's literally no justification. She of all people knew how it felt. But worse still, you were a child. She walked into her relationship as an adult. Once she adopted you out, she ceased being your mother legally. There is nothing you owe her. Any friend saying you should pay has to mind their own business and doesn't even understand 1% of the horror you went through. Surround yourself with people who love and support you and cut out the negative. Close this chapter, change your number, speak more to your therapist.